Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and we're here to talk about all the things that are happening inside the city of Missoula, Montana, and maybe the United States. But let's kick things off. Uh, I got a brand new Flagship Friday video for you guys, so I'm going to show you, you that later in the show. But let's uh, let's start a little bit of weather, because the weather's getting worse. Weather is looking uh, pretty clear for today, but this weekend you might see some of that snow. Even though if you weren't around this week, Wednesday afternoon, there was a little bit of snow later that evening. Uh, but of course today, the high is gonna be 60. So uh, last couple days, we've been kind of seeing some rarely nice uh, fall days, kind of holding out for some of those senior photos. Um, highs going to be 60, lows going to be 34 tonight with a high of 46 on Saturday. So if you want your kid to stay indoors and have a fun activity, Saturday drop-ins are perfect for that. I know it's a shameless plug, but Sunday, you're going to have an, a sunny day with a high of 50 degrees, and Monday, it's going to get even warmer with a high of 56, but your lows are going to get lower as we get further and further into the fall season. So let's talk about uh, some things that are happening in the news. Uh, one of the things I want to kick off with is the hurricane, uh, which was a downgraded tropical storm. But of course, nearly 400,000 electri uh, electricity accounts have lost their powers in Florida as of 3 p.m. Thursday. After the effects of Hurricane Michael came through Wednesday, the Florida panhandle comes from the Gulf of Mexico where the hurricane started and passed right over the uh, Florida's Panama City. Uh, it went up through Georgia and the Carolinas. Winds were at a category four with uh, winds over 155 miles per hour. Michael has been blamed for at least 11 deaths in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina. And now a tropical storm, the system has moved to um, North and South Carolina. Um, of course, um, officials in Florida are still assessing the damage to the uh, Hurricane Michael and urging people to stay off the roads. Uh, the storm caused nearly 500,000 power outages in North Carolina. Uh, more than a million people are without power. The State Emergency Management Agency on Friday morning, the main electric utility in Virginia said more than 400, 585,000 customers were affected. Those numbers are added to the 350,000 accounts with the power in Florida and more than 160,000 in Georgia. Even with the worst storm now past, flooding remains a threat as overwhelming river systems struggle to cope with the massive amounts of water. In Virginia, the National Weather Services said on Friday, today, significant river flooding is occurring on f or uh, forecast on the Apoxamox. Uh, uh, Potomac Tucks uh, River and possibly even on the Lower James River, excuse me. Uh, for more information, you can go to npr.org. You can go to CNN. You can find out all sorts of information by looking up Hurricane Michael and see what's all going on. Uh, many of the uh, uh, areas, uh, if you're still in a shelter, many uh, officials say that you should stay in the shelters of these areas before they uh, start removing debris and other damaged areas as well. The hurricane is a kind of a weird storm system. Well, uh, some houses can be torn off their foundation completely. Other houses can remain intact. So a lot of times um, you can have a neighborhood where one or two houses are affected or a whole neighborhood has been affected. So that's just some of the things that just natural, uh, the storms always seem to uh, have so you can always look that up by looking up Hurricane Michael, which uh, most of the places are still, uh, especially the Carolinas, are still reeling from uh, Hurricane Florence. Um, Trump is visiting Missoula. Uh, he is visiting on October 18th next week. The Missoula County Sher uh, uh, Sheriff Offices posted on its Facebook page Thursday that it was planning to meet with the U.S. Sec uh, Secret uh, Service about security measures for a presidential visit. visit. Uh, Trump is coming to campaign on behalf of Republican State Auditor Matt Rosendale, who is trying to unseat two-term incumbent Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester in the, this year's midterm election. Trump has set his sight on Tester since Trump's VA nomination uh, fell through um, with the an investigation on uh, the nomination when Tester refused to nominate him back in April uh, to di uh, director of the VA. And since then, uh, Donald Trump has made a personal mission against Tester. Uh, of course, my, why you may be wondering why uh, Donald Trump would be visiting uh, Missoula, of all places, uh, one of the more uh, liberal towns in the 127 counties in the state. Most of it is because Rivella County is from one of the, uh, uh, according to the Missoulian, um, it's because the near it's near Ravella County, and the majority of Republican lawmakers are from the Flathead areas. Uh, there have been protesters at previous rallies for the Trump and uh, surrogates, uh, but uh, stronger presence is expected in Missoula. And you can find out 
uh, more information by going to the Missoulian and more um, and find out what's going on because this is pretty much all over all the Montana newspapers. You can't miss it. Um, in state news, speaking of all over the state of Montana, one man uh, climbed all the peaks of uh, the state of Montana that uh, had an elevation of 12,000 plus. Um, Missoula resident Nate Bender decided to run up 27 mountain summits in five days. In 2012, be, um, Bender began to look beyond racing towards self defined nature, natural lines and mountain challenges. In Idaho, there have been nine peaks about 12,000 feet and connected these peaks in a, a prestigious challenge in the mountain running community. In Montana, there are 27 mountains that go over 12,000 foot mark, which means Bender accomplished his goal successfully linking all of Montana's 12,000 foot peaks in a single human powered push with a time of four days, three hours of sleep most nights, seven, uh, so it's gonna, uh, it was four days, seven hours, 44 minutes, and 19 seconds. By the time he finished, he had racked up an impressive 48,000 vertical feet of climbing with an average of 10,000 feet per day. Uh, that's that's a quite a feat, um, and he was able to do it. So that was Nate Bender. Um, and that's basically it for all your news. Uh, here are some of the new programs that are going to be hitting your airwaves um, from MCAT, from Missoula to Missoula. Here is uh, President Lecture Series and others. But the thing you would notice when you go into Russian apartments is that the apartments were nice, but you'd step out into the vestibules and they would reek of urine, the lights would be out, they hadn't been cleaned in years. And you would say to the Russians, you know, there are only four apartments around this vestibule, why don't you get together and clean it? And they would say, well, so-and-so's a drunk, so-and-so I don't like. Uh, but the real reason was, after 70 years of totalitarianism, they didn't know who was KGB, and so there was no social trust. It's the least trusting society I've ever been in. And so what happened when the Soviet Union fell, instead of working together, they basically stole everything. Everything was stolen. And it's a sign of what happens to society when there's a lack of social trust. Yeah. called Malay rights and also Malay privilege, which is the reason why we have Malay supremacy, which is like the Malaysian equivalent of white supremacy. And then the next one is the Sabah and the Sarawak indigenous, and the ones who have the least privilege are the Orang Asli. And then among the um, Nanbumi Putras, the Chinese are the most privileged ones because back then when the British brought them in, they were the ones who were located at the towns. They have more dominance and also control over the mining industry, and therefore they are inherently rich, and their richness is you know, generational, and they were brought further up until today. And then the Indians and the others, and then the others and the Indians, it is actually always like that because it is interrelated. Sometimes the Indians have more than the others, and the others have more than the Indians, vice versa. So if we incorporate these two together, so this is how it looks like in Malaysia when it comes to privilege. The Malays are always the ones with the most privilege, and the Orang Asli, even though they are part of the Bumi Putra, which is supposed to have more privilege than the rest, they are at the bottom, right?
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some movies that are coming out. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I prejudge a movie based on absolutely nothing but its title and maybe a little bit of the synopsis and maybe watching the trailer. Hey, let's kick things off with a uh, fake moon landing. And yes, this is a movie about the moon landing, which is real. The movie's fake. The moon landing is real. I don't want to get into it. Uh, kick off your weekend with a movie about the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, played by Ryan Gosling, who goes to the moon in this movie. This is just another movie about going where no man has gone before, and th that's pretty much it. It's about them going to the moon. And then talking about them going to the moon, I guess the drama behind it has everything to do with, like, uh, at that time, you know, space travel is relatively new, um, and it, it's hard, and a lot of people died trying to even get off the planet, and go into the moon is a whole other feat in itself, so you get to see all that stuff. So you could basically see a movie about a, a glorified uh, mathematician bringing um, people to the moon. Expect this movie to be controversial because someone said that the U.S. flag is not in it. Um, even though that the director has said that the men and NASA behind the, this flagship adventure are. Um, anyways, this basically movie is America. Um, anyways, watch another movie based on a true story. Because nothing says a good Hollywood movie like based on a true story. Up next, we got another movie. It's uh, Goosebumps 2, Haunted Halloween. If you have kids under 10 years of age and they're like the silliness between um, kids' books and that were meant to scare and confuse you because the twists along a lot in the book were like aliens, ghosts, puppet magic. Uh, Goosebumps 2, Haunted Halloween stars the fat kid from Stephen King, it and others. I can say fat kid because I'm fat. Um, it's our word. Just so you know. And also, uh, they're going to try to uh, incorporate... Because, you know, Goosebumps was a very uh, popular franchise. Uh, actually, it was a very terrible TV show. Very uh, very hit and miss. Mostly miss. Um, slime monsters. Uh, alien ghosts. I don't even know if they had alien ghosts. But they had, like weird superhero comic book, you know, alludes. But most of it was like kind of like scary stories. But it was also really silly. So a lot of... The, I mean, I was a kid that time when I was growing up with it. So these kind of movies are something that would be like, I don't know. I don't know. So, do you really want to go to one of these things and expect it? It's 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 a hit or miss. And it, it, just think about the Goosebumps show and watch this movie. All right, up next we got the last um, Quentin Tarantino-esque type film. When you have directors like Quentin Tarantino and Martin Scorsese with dialogue driving storylines, come Drew Goddard, who is known for The Cabin in the Woods. And I guess the X-Force movie that's coming up with Deadpool. But of course, watch it as we get a bunch of actors coming together uh, and try to out-act each other. Because that's what this kind of movie kind of seems like. Um, except Jeff Bridges. He really works well with others. I think he's great, personally. But we have Thor and Mrs. Grey and Mad Men Guy coming together to talk. And tension builds in this movie about strangers who have a bad time at El Royale. Um, which is the name. Once... And a while, there's always a large cast uh, building off each other. And I honestly, you know, like ensemble casts are not bad, but also it can be kind of weird because it's always like, oh, I didn't know that this dramatic thing happened in your past. Welp. Well, we got to move this plot along. We don't have this amount of time to resolve this kind of thing. So let's, uh, let's continue having a bad time at the El Royale. And I don't know. Are you going to have a bad time at El Royale? Maybe see it, maybe don't, but basically expect a highly uh, dialogue-driven film that's uh, very Quentin Tarantino-esque, or maybe not, because it's not Quentin Tarantino. Okay, that pretty much does it for that. Hey guys, usually when I um, um, end pre-critic, I do Flagship Friday. So I'm going to kick things off with Flagship Friday. This is, our, uh, this is from the kids at uh, CS Porter, and they're talking about the horrors of technology, particularly your cell phones. So without further ado, here's the premiere of this year's 2018-2019 Flagship Friday. Messing with us, guys? Yeah. You know how yeah. many pranks she's done this year? That dang Kool Aid. I remember yeah. when she filmed my milk carton up with your Oh, remember the Awful. worst one? The toilet paper. Oh, oh, that was nasty. <laughs>
There's a text on here. What text? There's nothing there. You guys, there's a text right here. Are you crazy? Are you sure we're the crazy ones? <laughs> Emery, where is she? I don't know. Where'd she go? Come on. Maybe there was something. She wasn't lying. What do you mean? See? You're just as crazy as the other two. You don't see it? Right here. Right, right here. <laughs> Join the party, L O L. Wait, where'd she go? I don't know. Guys, come look. Honestly, I'd prefer that over Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween. All right, let's talk about some events that are happening inside the city of Missoula. Um, hey, Missoula, things are happening in Missoula, and I'm going to tell you some of the events that you guys can check out. Tiny Tales and Storytime, as always, every Friday morning starting at 10.30 a.m. You guys can enjoy some reading with the little ones from birth to about five years of age just before they go to school. It's a good way to get kids engaged in reading. The Prophecies of Water. Sorry, excuse me. Uh, Spectrum Discovery Center, uh, where you can discover um, all sorts of things, uh, especially with their... Uh, um, theme today, the properties of water. They have a cool, uh, a lot of cool uh, rain stations and uh, interactive uh, exhibits to help engage in scientific learning and exploration. And this week's, wow, this week's uh, Makerspace is Spirographs. So you're going to make some cool things in the 3D printer at Spectrum. Watercolor and yarns at the Museum Public Library. Hey, watercolor, Painting classes, great. You gotta do a little watercolor painting, or if you just want to make a nice little hat, because hey, your guys are uh, coming up to the uh, winter season, and not wait, what make your own hats for Christmas. Uh, Cribbage and Bridge, see Missoula Senior Center uh, every Friday around uh, lunchtime, 12:30 ish. You know, they uh, always have a Cribbage and Bridge games playing around there, so you go there for lunch and you stay there for Cribbage and Bridge. Uh, there's the Montana Music Summit happening at the University of Montana. MCAT is going to be there pretty much from 1 to 4 p.m. today filming it. Um, we're not live streaming, just so you guys know. We are live streaming something tonight from basically from 4 p.m. all the way to about 9 p.m. And it's the uh, high school sports, both football. Um, Sentinel High School is going against uh, a team uh, somewhat. I, I got to double check this, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys in a little bit. But, of course, um, then there's Zen Triangle uh, Drawing Workshop at 2.30 p.m. Oh, look, okay, okay, I'm going way ahead of myself. Let's talk about the music summit. At Missoula's vibrant music scene comes to continues to grow. A new University of Montana event will highlight the business side of the industry. Uh, the two-day conference in the Gallagher Business Building will bring to uh, together artists, entertainment and executives, technology professionals, college students, entrepreneurs, and visionaries to present, educate, and share ideas about the evolving environment landscape. Sessions will cover a wide range of entertainment management topics, including guiding 
guidance to recording original music, talent management, and how to produce a music festival and community building through music. Because Missoula has a lot of cu uh, uh, music festivals, so why not have some more? Um, <laughs> Zentile Drawing Workshop starts at the Missoula Public Library starting at uh, 2.30. Missoula Public Library is, uh, is Zentangle Drawings during this class. Uh, the class is appropriate for adults, but teens who feel comfortable with a quiet classroom environment are welcome to attend. Space is limited to 24 participants. And online registration is required, and you can find the registration through Missoula Public Library at missoulapubliclibrary.org. And it meets in the large meeting room, and it's from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. Um, up next, uh, we got another. It's Grizz Soccer. The University of Montana Grizz Soccer team are taking on Southern Utah, and it's going to be a great soccer game. And they usually do it at the uh, South Field. It's uh, just off of South Street, and it's that area where they do a lot of their track tournaments for the University of Montana as well. So it's kind of like near dorm blazers you can't miss it. it's like south and higgins and it's a area right there where they play soccer um so let's uh let's move on to uh last best print fest archives so zootown arts community center are bringing are going into inside the vault to bring out some of their best uh last best print fest of the hallway galleries. For the show, all printmakers are invited to submit an um, edition of prints based on common themes. This show features local printmakers as well as printmakers from across the Pacific Northwest. The Last Best Print Fest will be on display at the Zach's Hallway from all of October, and you can check it out Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. So they're kicking it off with their Last Best Print Fest tonight at 5.30, but then you can check it all out happening all month long in October. There's the UN Planetarium Show at the Public House at the University of Montana and starting at 6 p.m. Um, they have two shows, 6 p.m. and another one starting at 7.30 p.m. And they're $6, uh, $6 for adults, $4 for ch uh, children 12 and under. And you have to uh, go to grizzticks.com to uh, get your tickets. Tickets are not taken at the, uh, tickets are taken out the door, but they're not sold at the door. So you have to apply online through the University of Montana's UM Planetarium Public Shows. And once again, I want to uh, give a shout out to um, Rootehead Studios who are doing the Missoula Haunted House. You go to missoulahauntedhouse.com for more information. But all the times this weekend are from 7 to 11 p.m. on the weekends, Thursdays, um, Wednesdays and Thursdays from 7 to 9 p.m. And more days as you get close to Halloween, including some kid-friendly um, haunted house um, around 4 or 5 p.m. after school for some of the kids who don't want to get too scared because um, it gets kind of freaky in there for sure. Chinese Opera and Music Recital, University of Montana tonight at 7.30 p.m. The recital features pieces of Chinese opera clips as well as classical cl Chinese music work performed with traditional Chinese music instruments, eru, uh, gancheng, and a Chinese flute, etc. And... Hey guys, there's going to be two comedy things happening tonight. So if you are interested in checking out some of the comedy of, that Missoula has to offer, you could, I know I'm, I'm very skeptical of that. I'm always skeptical of that because, you know, comedy is hit and miss. Um, comedy at Monk's Bar, first time. I've never heard a comedy show at uh, Monk's that usually have hip hop and hip hop and hip hop. Um, comedy at the Roxy. They do comedy once in a while at the Roxy. Last time, the last time I was there was when I watched Gingers on Ice, which is kind of like a Key and Peele version of uh, two guys doing improv comedy. Um, and that's going to be at the Roxy starting at 8.30 p.m. And those are some of the comedy things that are happening tonight. I want to tell you guys about our live stream that are happening tonight. It is uh, Sentinel High School and Big Sky High School. They're doing a back-to-back -back game. They're not go playing each other, but they're going to be doing a back-to-back -back game. Uh, Sentinel High School is going against Bill Billings West at 4 p.m. We're going to be live streaming on our Facebook page. Um, Big Sky High School is going to be taking on Bozeman at 7.30 p.m. It's part of their senior homecoming night. So Big Sky is celebrating their homecoming night. They had Spirit Week all week this week. Let's go Eagles. Um, and that pretty much does it for your Friday stuff. There's a lot of things happening on Friday, so I'm going to take a little break and throw it to an art clip that will be featured in October from the Missoula Art Museum. So I'll be right back after this.
Welcome to another edition of the Montana Department of Transportation's How to Drive a Roundabout. Oversized vehicles and vehicles with trailers may straddle both lanes while driving through a roundabout. Stay a safe distance behind trucks, because they will usually use both lanes. Most roundabouts will include a truck apron, a raised section of pavement around the central island, that allows them to travel on the roundabout without using both lanes. Trailers should use the truck apron if available. Looking good! Remember, do not crowd these vehicles. Rather, give them the room needed in order to safely drive through the roundabout. Oh no! That's the wrong way! Following these instructions, you'll have no problem navigating the new roundabouts popping up all around Montana. Hey, how, hey, how's it going over? Uh, uh, oh, have a good day. <laughs> oh, huh, I didn't see you over there. What a nice day to be out and about today. But I want to tell you something about what's going on here. Hold on a second, let me just adjust this. Uh, okay, there you go. Let me talk about MCAT. MCAT is doing Saturday drop-ins starting every Saturday this fall, winter, and spring season from 1 to 5 p.m. Let's go check it out, come on. MCAT is a great way to create. All you gotta do is come on down to our location at 500 North Higgins. It's as easy as that. See you there. Welcome to another edition of the Montana Department of Transportation's How to Drive a Roundabout. We all know what to do at a traffic signal. Red means stop. Green means go. But when we come to a roundabout, we're often unfamiliar with what to do next. Oh no! Whoa, cowboy! Wrong way. Here are the tips on how to properly drive on a roundabout. First, slow down when approaching a roundabout. Second, yield to traffic in the roundabout. Vehicles in the roundabout have the right of way. Now you're getting it. Third, do not stop within the circular portion of the roundabout. That's no place to stop. Fourth, signal your turn and exit the roundabout at the appropriate point. Following these instructions, you'll have no problem navigating the new roundabouts popping up all around Montana. Welcome to another edition. Oh, my bad. There's MissoulaEvents.net. I just wanted to uh, uh, get back to it. I, roundabouts. Hey, yeah, Montana Department of Transportation is releasing a whole bunch of videos about how to use a roundabout as we are moving on. And uh, the Van Buren Street Project is starting to really start looking good and start completing their uh, double roundabout system that's going on there as well. But let's talk about some Saturday things. Uh, of course, uh, you saw from the uh, nice little... Uh, um, one of our old uh, PSAs, our old commercials for our Saturday drop-ins. Our Saturday drop-ins are every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. here at MCAT. And it's for kids age 9 to 13 to enjoy some stop animation. But, of course, you already heard that from our um, uh, little cute little uh, Lego guy, who's me. Uh, <laughs> uh, Saturday. Um, Speaking of Saturday, Saturday uh, still happening strong is the uh, Saturday market, uh, that which happens from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Homeward financial fitness classes happening, uh, kicking off at 9 a.m. And this is a good way to uh, be financially secure. And it is a free financial fitness class. This is from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So this is an all-day deal tomorrow. You can get into the financial shape, set your goals for spending and saving, manage debt, and learn other money management skills. Learn how to take charge of your financial life. And there's New Zealand Days for Missoula Rugby Pitch. This is an all-age, touch, no-tackle rugby, rugby clinic uh, led by members of the Missoula uh, Youth Rugby. Runs from 10 a.m. until about noon at Fort uh, Missoula's Rugby Pitch on Saturday. Uh, no experience is necessary. This is clinic is free and no need to advance. Sign up. At 1 p.m., the annual uh, Tubby Thompson match takes place on the rugby pitch. So that's what's happening. Fort Missoula, you can't miss it. They have uh, actually have... Uh, um, what are those called? Um, regional, um, appropriate, um, what's that called? I, I'm, I'm trying to find the right words for it. It's like, it's uh, legal. I don't know. It's like legal, um, uh, requi legally required rugby uh, 
uh, field goals, I guess. I, I can't think of the word. It's like, you know, when you they can't think of any words and it's like so obvious to you guys, but that's what they have. They have um, legally <laughs> fields. It's going to bother me all day. All right, let's move on so I don't get too frustrated. The Big Read event continues on game day at the library, Musical Bug Public Library. This is a fantasy themed board and role playing games. And this happens in the larger read meeting room from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And role playing games like D&D &D and all that stuff, they go on for a long time. So you want to set up as much time as you possibly can to set up the world and play in it. So that's happening from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Mizzou Public Library Big Read event. Open hours and tours of the Moon Randolph Homestead. If you want to get out and about, uh, tomorrow might not be the best day to do it, but there's always a bunch of Saturdays you can go check out the Moon Randolph Homestead. Bring your friends, family to the Moon Randolph Homestead from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Public tours are available during open hours and a first come, first serve basis. Um, or explore the homestead's historic orchard, old buildings, livestock at your own pace. Visitors are encouraged to picnic on the orchard, draw, write, play, and spend time in the unique public cultural site. Uh, Grizz Volleyball is happening in the afternoon at the West Auxiliary Gym at the Dahlberg Arena. Come support the Grizz Volleyball team take on Idaho. Buhas, the Halloween Art Mar, and this is jumping way ahead to that night. Free Cycles is doing a, a Von Common first annual fall extravaganza Boo House, a haunted Art Mar. Um, Saturday, Free Cycles, 7 um, 32 South 1st Street. Um, treat yourself to an evening of frights, live music, art, and community. $5 for all ages. Beer and wine available with ID. Tour of the Boo House, a spooky installation created by the Von Common artists and friends. And also, hey, if you're looking to get more of, into that uh, horror genre, cult classic, the movie The Thing, the original The Thing, with Kurt Russell, Keith David, and others, and Walter Brimley, the diabetes guy, um, join every Saturday night for the cult festival, uh, cult... Uh, classics and uh tomorrow night at the roxy is going to be playing the thing starting at 9 p.m and you can check it out by going to the roxy.org but of course you can always go to the missoula events uh net to find out more information about all your events see there's a whole group of events it looks like on saturday there's also a funkify your bike at workshop at the free cycles as well um that's at noon and there's a bunch of october stuff happening Oktoberfest at the monks absolutely uh Chris Moon, the Badlander. I'm, uh, I'm, I hear that he's celebrating his 10-year anniversary at the uh, Badlander, so you can check all that out and more. And you can learn all this stuff by going to MissoulaEvents.net. I want to give a shout-out to our own website because we have put up a link to the new library, so a feature of MCAT's home, and you got to get to see some floor plans and designs. Um, here is... Uh, what the library is supposed to look like when it gets completed in 2020. And MCAT will be moving in there hopefully by March of 2020. Uh, it's slated to open about the spring, late spring 2020. So this is where we're going to be. And if you click on this picture right here at MCAT.org, it'll bring you to a live uh, updated picture. So it, uh, this, uh, this live camera it updates every couple minutes and you get to see what's on here. So it's a nice view. Look at this. A nice open sunrise in the Missoula area over construction of the area and you get to see right here. So if you look to your left, we're, they're going to be directly across from, so if in this side over here, that's where the uh, MCT is. And this, um, and basically ba back behind here, which is going, I believe, west uh, that's where the old library is, and of course, you know, you know your bearings because you know where the the L <laughs> and the M is. I'm I'm thinking way ahead of myself. Okay, so that's just a little uh, brief overview. You can guys can check that out. Go to MCAT.org to click on the link to see MCAT's future new home. We're going to be on the ground floor, literally. Uh, that's where our studio is going to be, and we're going to have basically uh, windows um, in our studio this time. So we're going to have a more of a uh, Good Morning America type feel with people in the background, which could also be a bad thing if you think about it. But I don't want to think about it. Let's think about something else. Let's think about what you guys can do to find out more information about moi. By, uh, all you got to do is Google or look up Wake Up Missoula, and you go to this nice page, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So a nice your major, write it out twice. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, I'm not on Instagram, sorry. I'm not on Snapchat, sorry. I'm not on blah, blah, blah. I'm not on Kick. I'm not on um, whatever. Yeah, so... Just Google Wake Up Missoula and you'll find this and you get to find all the great content and uh, great information about uh, Missoula. I give you a brief overview of what's happening here at MCAT in the city of Missoula, but you guys can look up all those yourself um, as well as look it up Wake Up Missoula, MCAT.org. 
Missoulian, NPR, and all that stuff. Great, great sources for information about Missoula. Hey, are you as excited uh, as me about a uh, uh, president uh, visiting next uh, Thursday on October 18th? I don't know. Tell me what you think. Uh, comment or whatever. Um, thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, goodbye. Thank you.